Amen. Okay? Yes. So now, we're going to deal with the office of the prophet this morning. Mm -hmm. Prophet and the apostle ranked in the same category. Um, I'm doing this because it's, it's time that this be corrected in some of your lives. Uh, I think Mr. Porter had to get to this place because having come as long as he had to not understand what took place mm -hmm. and for God to tell him now mm -hmm. there's some catch up time. Amen. Now sometimes people never understand. Mm -hmm. Let me help you out. Not all churches deal with this. Mm -hmm. Some churches say they have been done away with but that's not so. Amen. You have prophets before prophets who are recognized mm -hmm. because in the book of Genesis God called Abraham a prophet. And told the king, go and tell Abraham to pray for you and, and ask him to forgive you. And he said, and my prophet Abraham, when he prayed for you, you'll get better. Amen. Amen. So the, the ministry of the office of the prophet is Old Testament and New Testament. The prophets are not dead. Prophets are territorial. Some have certain areas that God has called them to. Some have a specific reason that they are prophets, but then there are prophets who have territory and deeper regions. Amen. 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 And, 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 and the prophetic call is an anointing from God. Amen. Anybody can wake up one morning and say, I'm a prophet. Amen. You can prophesy and not be a prophet. Amen. It has already been noted in the scripture. Yes. So you can't wake up one morning saying, I'm a prophet. A real prophet will walk in the genuine love of God. Amen. You can't have bitterness and resentfulness and expect that office to operate in your life to its fullest capacity. Amen. Not so. Because when you really, really love God and he's called you to be a prophet, a lot of times you got a word for your enemies. Amen. And you can't keep the word because they don't like it. Amen. So you got to be sensitive to God and not to yourself. Amen. All right? Amen. So there's been God minister and give you a word of wisdom. I understand Solomon's call. Solomon's call, what did he ask God for? Wisdom. wisdom. Amen. What was he successful in? Wisdom. wisdom. Hallelujah. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't have to. When you get wisdom, God will automatically teach you how to do some things. Amen. Some of y'all ain't got wisdom on common day living. Amen. Well. Praise the Lord. Move on, Pastor. Be nice this morning. I am being very nice. Some of you so quick at the mouth to you shoot something down before you say a word of wisdom. Amen. The Bible tells us to live peaceable with all men. Holiness without no man should see the Lord. So if you work for peace, that means you got wisdom. Amen. And it calls wisdom the principal thing and calls wisdom sheep. So she means multiplication, manifestation. Amen. So if you got wisdom, before you tell something, you say, should I tell this? Is it edifying? Right. Is it filling up? Is it encouraging? Yes. Hello. And, and in order to be a prophet, you got to learn how to have wisdom. You can't tell everything you see. Amen. Hallelujah. You see some stuff and got to act like you ain't seen. Amen. There's a difference between a seer and a prophet. A seer has eyes to see beyond the wall. Amen. You can sit in front of a seer and they already know your whole history. Amen. And never change their face. Hallelujah. Amen. Know where you're going, how you're going to get there, and where you've been. Amen. Mm, am I helping you out? Amen. So I, I, I want to help you out with prophets to the point, a lot of times people pull away from prophets because they're life ragged. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks tell you they're a prophet and you see them living the wrong kind of life and then they'll tell you something and it might come to pass, but that don't make them ordained of God. You got to understand the devil is a duplicate of everything that God do. Oh, yeah. So there's a prophet of God and there's a prophet of the devil. Yes. Amen. Normally the prophet of the devil will forecast bad doom. The prophet of God will show you your way out if you let if you listen. Amen. The prophet came to, Isaiah came to Hezekiah mm -hmm. and said, set your house in order, for you shall surely die. Amen. Well, who told him 
to tell Hezekiah that. God did. And so when, when Hezekiah prayed and turned to the wall and God told Isaiah, go back and tell him I add 15 years to his life. The same one brought the bad news was being used by God for a purpose. But when he prayed, it turned him back so he had to go back and add 15 years. Amen. Same way with Jonah. When he went to Nineveh, he went to warn them. And they said, if you will hearken to the word of the Lord, then this tragedy won't come upon you. So they went on a fast. They prayed. And so the tragedy didn't come. But all about 20 years later, it came and overtook them. Because after they went back, they went back to the old lifestyle. So in a part in a certain amount of time, the prophecy was fulfilled. Amen. 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 Not all prophecy is changeable. Mm -hmm. But there is a place you can get in God and seek for the changeable of God. Amen. Alright? So uh, let me give you the definition of what a prophet is. A prophet is a mouthpiece of God. In, in, in the place of God that will speak under the authority and the anointing of God. And when a prophet comes on the scene, things change. Uh, you'll find that there was a time that the prophet went before David. And, and the people heard that he was coming. And the prophet said, the people ran to the prophet and said, is it good or is it bad? He said, no, it's good. And the people were calm because they knew any time a prophet showed up, it meant that God was either judging something, getting ready to change something for the good or for the bad. Amen. All right? So it means to, uh, to speak a word, to be employed by God, to be a divider of the understanding of the word of God. The word prophet is derived from a word signifying to bubble forth like a fountain. And so it's to announce or to pour forth the declaration of God. It is to bring interpretation and essential meaning to the purpose and the will of God for a person's life, for the order of the things of God, and for the structure of the things of God. So when a prophet comes on the scene and begins to prophesy, give you a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, an example of a word of knowledge would be, she's here today, Sister Tracy. Mm -hmm. God gave me a word, and when he gave me the word, he added to it. So then from the word of knowledge, I want to prophesy. Amen. And Sister Tracy, was crazy enough to accept. Amen. Because you can get prophecy and don't accept it. Amen. And when you reject prophecy, you reject God. Amen. And if you reject prophecy and run your mouth against the prophecy, you open up to have touched. So now you're in worse shape than you was when you started because you touched. Normally, prophecy is not something that look like it's going to come to pass. Miss Oliver sitting here, I gave her a prophecy several months ago. And I got to know that it looked like that wasn't done. I like those kind of prophecies. Because that's when the prophet is on the line. Yeah. And several weeks ago, the prophecy stepped on the scene. Amen. Amen. And now the prophecy is in full compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, though it looked like it wasn't God, mm -hmm. she never questioned it because she had had prior experiences. Mm -hmm. And when you've had prior experiences, you just get relaxed. Because isn't it funny, when God prophesies something, he never gives the steps nor the orders. Yeah. And most of you, you want to know how, when, where, what time, and to who house do I have to be. But her prophecy 
hath been fulfilled. Amen. Amen. And I understand that she received her prophecy. Amen. She didn't judge the source. She accepted it and she rested and now she got it. Amen. Am I helping you out? Amen. Mother Brown went and purchased a car. Got one word in the church service. God said, go buy a car. Amen. So she got crazy. Her car running all right. He didn't ask for that. It was his timing to be a blessing in her life. Amen. She couldn't stop at the recourse of action. She had to press in faith. Amen. And there sits the car. There sits the car. Amen. Am I helping you out? One word from God can change your whole life. Amen. Amen. I was praying for you. Praying for you. Praying for you. All right? I'm going to help them out. Straighten you out. God gave you a word and several more words. And said that money won't be your problem no more. I'm going to help you out. You didn't receive it. I'll tell you why you didn't receive it. When the problem came, mm -hmm. you accepted the problem and would not deal with what the word was. Amen. Amen. Cut it off, baby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You got to deal with what the word said. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to Mother Brown. Did she not go to a car lot and could not get a car? Yes. yes. Did she quit? No. 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 She dealt with what she told the car lot man. God said, You will look at your financial situation and call it what it looks like and grumble and complain about it when you ought to stand up and say, Devil, you are a liar and you are the father of lies and you are liar.
pay my tithes first. Amen. I don't even buy gas till I get my tithes. Amen. Tasha drove the vans on empty to get the money, came back and paid me the tithes on empty, went to the gas station, and the van quit. <laughs> but I'm going to help you out, Pastor Devon. She had no gas while she was riding. 